Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 full house moments that made us happy cry. For this list, we'll be looking at some of the most heartwarming scenes with the Tanner clan, and as an added bonus, we'll be bringing the revival Fuller House into the mix as well. If you're not caught up with either show, there will be spoilers. Which Full House franchise moment made you want to hug it out? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Danny singing My Girl When DJ is hosting a benefit concert, Danny wants to do something special so that she'll appreciate him a bit more. I just wish I could show DJ that I'm as hip and cool as you guys are. Danny, you don't have to be hip and cool. You're spick and span. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I want DJ to be proud of me. Unfortunately, his attempt is more hilariously cringy than hip and cool. Thankfully, he gets another chance when DJ asks him to perform at the concert anyway. Featuring a brand new singer I'm very proud of, my dad. Let's give it up for Danny Tanner. This time, he sings a much more heartfelt song, one that he used to sing for her when she was little. What can make me feel this way, my girl? While Danny isn't the coolest guy in the world, you can't deny that he's one of the best dads, and hearing DJ say that she's proud to have him as her father is just icing on the cake. Number 9. The Doors Always Open During the original series finale, who didn't cry saying goodbye to the family that overcame any hardship together? Well, get ready to shed tears all over again in Fuller House's final episode. One last howl? On three. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> Our favorite she-wolves, DJ, Stephanie, and Kimmy, have all found their true loves and shared a triple wedding. But it's time for Stephanie and Kimmy's families to leave. Or is it? Even though they're free to go, Steph and Kimmy decide to stay because they want to. Wait, you mean you want to stay? Of course we do. It's lonely out there. <laughs> Plus, Stephanie's finally pregnant after struggling with infertility for so long. If this is truly the end of the Full House era, it went out on a high note and showed the true strength of the family's bond. Can we stay? Of course. <laughs> the door is always open. <gasps> Number 8. Joey's True Value Poor Joey. All he wanted was to get DJ a new car for her birthday. Whose car is this? It's mine, officer. I, uh, I gave it to her for her birthday. Is there a problem here? There won't be if you all keep your hands where I can see them and back away from the vehicle. Instead, he gets scammed into buying a stolen car, framed for theft, and only avoids prison because his family points out his goofy nature like he's one big joke. I'm the big family joke. All this time I thought you guys were laughing with me and you were actually laughing at me. Thanks, appreciate it. That couldn't be further from the truth. The Tanners love Joey so much and view him as a vital member of the family. You see, Joey, we don't know what we'd do without you. That's right. So there's no way you're leaving this house because you were there for the girls and I want you to be there for my kids. He's not just good for a few laps. He's a fair, loving, supportive man that would do anything for his loved ones. And this tender moment is just the validation he deserves. Number 7. Build Me Up Buttercup Stephanie's looking for something borrowed for the wedding when she makes a horrifying discovery. She's losing her memories of her mother Pam. Having lost their mother at such a young age, the girls were always afraid of forgetting about her and the good times they shared. I feel like I've lost that connection with her. And the veil just, just reminds me more of that. Thankfully, DJ has the perfect solution. She and Kimmy take Stephanie to a diner from their childhood. Oh, it's nice to know that there are things I can actually re-remember. Thanks for giving me back this memory, Mom. And it's yours forever to keep. Some memories start returning, including Pam's favorite song, Build Me Up Buttercup. Build Me Up Buttercup? This was Mom's favorite song. Yeah, it sure was. 
Thanks for the visit, Mom. It's scary to think that you could forget someone you love, but thankfully, little moments like this can stir up the best memories and remind you that they're never truly gone. Why do you think you me up? Yeah. You know me but I got baby just to let me down. Let me down. Number 6. Joey and Kimmy Bonding Have you ever wondered why Kimmy hung around the Tanner house so much in the original series? We never got to see her actual parents, but it's clear that they were never around when she needed them. Mom and Dad are coming? I haven't seen them in years! Are they still traveling the world? Yeah, they travel the world looking for lost cities. Which is weird, because they haven't been able to find San Francisco in two decades. <laughs> this is made even clearer in Fuller House, when her parents don't show up for her engagement party. Fortunately, Joey's there to comfort her, and shows that he can relate to her situation since the Tanners have been more of a family than his actual family. Kimmy, I don't like to talk about it very much, but I didn't have the greatest family life either. And that's why all you guys became my family. Wow. It sounds like we have a lot more in common than we realized. To top it all off, he personally volunteers to walk Kimmy down the aisle on her wedding day. I would be very honored if you'd allow me to walk you down the aisle on your wedding day. Oh. Really? Nothing would make me happier. Thanks, Joey. Mm -hmm. Seeing two comic relief characters share a touching, relatable moment is just too much for the heartstrings. Number five, I think about it every day. You have to know that no matter what you do wrong, and no matter how angry I get, I am always going to forgive you. Because I love you. Stephanie's really done it this time. She accidentally drove Joey's car into the kitchen. I'm in the house, and I'm still in the car. <laughs> While the scenario is typical sitcom shenanigans, Stephanie feels incredibly guilty, to the point where she's willing to punish herself worse than Danny ever could. Fortunately, he tells her that no matter what she does, nothing will ever stop him from loving his daughter. It's a really sweet and relatable moment for anyone who's ever broken anything, a reminder that things can be replaced, but loved ones are irreplaceable. And you could never be replaced. Gee, I never thought of that. I think about it every day. This was definitely one of little Stephanie's most iconic scenes, but how likely is it that she'd make the same mistake as an adult? More likely than you'd think. I'm in the house, and I'm still in the car. Again. <laughs> oh no. Number four, the perfect surrogate mother. During the first season of Fuller House, we learned the very heartbreaking fact that Stephanie is infertile and unlikely to conceive children of her own. I can't have children. Oh, Stephanie. In season three, she tries to find a surrogate mother for her and her boyfriend with little success until the perfect candidate shows up, Kimmy Gibbler. Did someone order womb service? <laughs> We're just as shocked as you guys considering how in the original series, Kimmy and Stephanie had a very on-again, off-again friendship. Emphasis on off. But seeing Kimmy willing to make such a commitment for Steph really highlights how much their relationship has developed, from frenemies to roommates to surrogate sisters. Of all the people in the world to do this for me, I, I never, ever, 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 <laughs> dreamed it would be you. It really goes to show how much someone can grow between two series. I love you, Kimmy Gibbler. Aww. I love you too, Steph. <laughs> Number three, DJ's big moment. In the original series, DJ and Steve were high school sweethearts and arguably one of the franchise's best couples. You got me crazy, DJ. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> you do? Really? Yeah. yeah. I wanted to say it a hundred times, but every time I tried, I, I kept chickening out. While they did break up in season seven, they remained on good terms. Though it was clear when they returned for Fuller House that the spark between them never quite left. The two ultimately fall back in love in season three, and it all leads to the moment fans have been screaming for. <laughs> Donna, Joe, Margaret, Tanner, Fuller. We first met 27 years ago, and my life has never been the same. 
The good times with you were some of the best of my whole life. In season five, Steve pops the question in front of their loved ones. I would be the happiest man in the world if yours was the first face I see when I wake up every morning. DJ, will you marry me? Yes. <laughs> yes, I know you can. Throw in a montage of iconic clips of the couple from both shows, and it's virtually impossible to shut off the waterworks. Number two, Jesse and Becky's wedding. After years of chasing women, Jesse has finally found the love of his life, Rebecca Donaldson, and the two decide to tie the knot in season four. All that stuff, it doesn't matter. All that matters is tomorrow at 10 a.m., you and I are gonna be husband and wife. After a zany day full of skydiving and a short stint in jail, nobody jumps out of a plane on their wedding day. <laughs> Jesse. Told you. It's finally time for the wedding everyone, and we do mean everyone, has been waiting for. The ceremony's nothing short of beautiful. Jesse and Becky declare their love for each other in front of all of their loved ones. I've been so happy. Jesse performs a heartwarming cover of Forever by the Beach Boys, coupled with a montage highlighting our lovebirds. While they've had their ups and downs, it made this moment worth it all, as our newlyweds begin a lifelong journey together. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. DJ and Steve jump over a waterfall. DJ and Steve try to catch a wedding ring only to rediscover their love for each other. Did I really jump over those falls just to save your wedding ring? You did. You're amazing. And you jumped over those falls just to save me. I'm amazing too. <laughs> yes, you are. The Tanners are here to stay. The Tanners decide not to sell their house. You know what? Michelle's right. This house is more than just walls and a ceiling. It's our lives. Sisterly comfort. DJ comforts Stephanie when she misses their mother. We have three people that love us a lot. We're the only ones with a dad and Uncle Jesse and a Joey. And we have something else too. We do. We have each other. Ramona and Jackson's improved relationship. After barely getting along in season one, Ramona and Jackson now see each other as family. Ramona, when you first moved in here, I wasn't happy about it. But now we've been through so much. Well, I, I feel like you're my sister. Aww. I feel the same way. Welcome Nikki and Alex. Becky finally gives birth to the twins. Oh, look what we brought into this world. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for giving me two beautiful, healthy little boys. <laughs> look at him smile. Oh, I love you. I love you too. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Danielle Joe Tanner Kimmy has given birth to Stephanie's daughter, but Steph still needs to name the child. Hey, look! I have a baby! And they even let me bring her home. At the baby naming party, Stephanie announces that her daughter will be named Danielle Jo Tanner, after two of the most important people in her life, Danny and DJ. So I'd like to introduce you to our daughter, Danielle, or as we like to call her, Danny Tanner. Danny's the father that raised her to be the person she is today, and DJ has been the best sister anyone could ask for. So it only makes sense that Stephanie would honor them both in this way. Our baby's middle name will be Joe. So if someone someday wants to call her DJ, there'd be no better honor. To top it off, she makes Kimmy Danny's godmother, cementing their much improved friendship. So our baby's godmother is Kimmy Gibbler. She likes me. She really, really likes me. <laughs> Overall, the gesture's a loving tribute to the three people who deserve it the most, especially our own Danny Tanner. 
Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.